Hello, this is a continuation of my video on the work of B.F. Skinner, this one dealing with applications of some of his ideas. Skinner displayed a strong practical vision throughout his career. This was expressed both in seeing possible applications for his ideas and in the practical devices he developed for his animal researches. As part of his work, he built his own puzzle box, the well-known Skinner box, which was more practical for animal experiments than the old Thorndike model. Using one of these boxes, Skinner could train a rat to press down on a bar, which led both to the automatic release of a food pellet and the automatic recording of the rat's behavior. As the box enabled the rat to actively determine the speed of events, Skinner was able to calculate response rates under different circumstances and set the rate of reward so that he could study partial reinforcement schedules. It was also possible to investigate the results of mixed responses to bar pushing, such as both food and an electric shock. A similar concept lay behind his proposal during World War II to develop a missile that could be guided by a pigeon pecking at a spot on a display screen if the missile started to deviate from its assigned course, a proposal which the American military eventually rejected as being too unorthodox. By contrast, several other ideas which Skinner had gained acceptance and proved themselves of value. One was programmed instruction. This occurred to him when he was visiting his daughter's fourth grade class in 1953. Skinner realized that operant conditioning techniques could also be used to create more effective teaching methods. Complicated subjects could be broken down into simple steps in a logical sequence and students could be presented with questions and immediately told whether their answers were correct or not. That is, they would be given immediate positive reinforcement, which would be very effective in consolidating learning. He saw that as one teacher couldn't simultaneously provide reinforcement for every child in a class, new textbooks would have to be produced, allowing the children to award themselves with each correct step they took. Teaching machines could also be employed. This approach had a significant impact in schools in the United States and elsewhere for some years, but educators eventually realized that these atomistic methods were insufficient. Learners also needed holistic, hierarchical thought structures, and, with humans, delayed reinforcement often had better results than immediate reinforcement. Thinking about one's response could lead to more learning than quick responses. Even so, the techniques have proved useful and remain incorporated into many grade school textbooks. They also underlie some modern computer and internet-based self-instruction programs in schools and businesses. More generally, Skinner had an impact on teacher training through his application of his ideas to the classroom situation. These included his emphasis on the importance of positive reinforcement in teaching children and the negative impact of aversive punishment, the need to break down the tasks the children are expected to accomplish into small achievable steps, and the value of the children practically experiencing what they were learning rather than just listening to the teacher explain it. Another practical application of Skinner's ideas was behavioral modification. This had a significant impact on the treatment of mental and emotional disorders. Skinner saw clearly that the same techniques of shaping, which he applied to animals in laboratories, could be applied to shape the behavior of human patients, and together with two of his graduate students, began experimental trials from the late 1940s onwards. As with most behavioral shaping, the technique was to give tiny rewards for tiny changes of behavior, in this case to change from sick to healthy actions. Thus, they would set up lever pressing stations at a state mental hospital from which psychotic patients would receive candy for operating the machines in an orderly way. When the patients had started doing that, the therapists then gave them tokens for appropriate behavior, for example, grooming themselves, voluntarily attending meals, helping with household chores, and the like. The tokens were redeemable for candy, cigarettes, or privileges like watching television, choosing a dinner companion, or talking to a doctor. This technique was often effective in changing behavior. 
For example, in the case of one depressed woman who wouldn't eat and was in danger of dying of starvation, it was noted that she enjoyed receiving visitors and a television set, radio, books and magazines and flowers. So initially she was moved to a room without any of these comforts and was rewarded with one of these things she liked every time she ate. <coughs> she was thus progressively trained to eat normally and eventually made a full recovery. These techniques were adopted in a number of mental hospitals and reform schools and came to be seen as a useful component in therapies for severely disordered patients. They are costly in terms of time and staff effort, however, which undoubtedly limits their actual use. Skinnerian behavior modification techniques have also proved useful in the treatment of less severe problems, including smoking, obesity, shyness, tics, and some speech impediments. Again, phobias, such as an extreme fear of snakes, have been treated by step-by-step -step conditioning. More generally, apart from rewarding and reinforcing good behavior by mental patients, retarded children, and prisoners by giving them tokens, the same techniques of secondary reinforcement have been effectively used in workplaces by giving employees bonus vouchers for such behaviors as getting to work on time. Skinnerian aversion learning has also proved useful, as in one case where coyotes were inhibited from killing sheep by being given toxic lamb burgers wrapped in sheep fur at the perimeters of sheep ranches. The toxic burgers would make the animals vomit and they would develop an instant aversion to lamb meat and sheep. I should also mention an attempt to implement Skinner's ideas by a group of people outside of the psychological community in the form of the creation of a utopian community based on his concepts in the novel Walden II in Twin Oaks, Virginia in 1967. This experienced many problems and through practical experience the commune members developed their own ethos and practices. Although the attempts to closely model behavior on Skinnerian lines was dropped, his idea of work tokens was retained and remains part of the community's system. Thank you for listening. The next and final video in the set on behaviorism will deal with the paradigm shift to cognitive science.